This is such an incredible story. So there you were, Dion, you, you do ultra marathons. So you're in the Gobi Desert setting up for this ultra marathon. And then this little one appears. Tell us when you first saw her. So I'm running a 155 mile race. It's a six stage, seven day race across the Gobi Desert. Gobi decides to start running with me on day two of the race. And she just appears in your camp. She, she just appeared the night before. She'd actually ran with some runners the, on the previous day. And I saw her the night before around the campsite and I thought to myself, she's a pretty smart dog. She's getting lots of food off all the runners. <laughs> and I thought there's And no they way. don't like giving their food away, do they? Exactly. You have to carry all of your food with you. So But this is a desert where water's more important. And mm. she's only got little tiny legs. Yeah. And you're going a long way. Yeah, survival was, you know, one of the one of the key things for, for us as humans, but then for her we all sort of chipped in to help her. But she took a real liking to me and the bond was formed. And you me. didn't feel at any stage say, Go away, dog, go away, stop <laughs> leave me alone, stop running after me. Yeah, when she me. started kind of running with you, did you think, well she'll she'll trail off in a minute and yeah, go away? We we didn't know whose dog it was, you know, it was a stray dog just 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 arrived. And for her to have this connection with me that's just come from nothing, I didn't encourage her to join the race with me as such. Um, and then we finished day two together and the bond was formed. She'd sleep with me during well, the night. Uh, you know, Dion, anyone who has a dog will know you don't choose it, it chooses you. And that's where it becomes really difficult and really emotional. And when we went to the rescue centre to look at dogs, our dog chose us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, like you, we would be exactly the same. What do you do now? This dog loves you. You can't say, right, bye-bye now, can you? No, and I didn't. I made her a promise to bring her back to the UK and I saw something in her. I had a, a tough upbringing, a tormented childhood, and I saw that she needed help and she needed someone to be out looking out for her. So I made a promise to her in the desert to say, I'm going to take her back to the UK and give her a, you know, the best home that's possible. But so far, so good. Yeah, it's not simple yeah. as it yeah. sounds. Yes. Because that was, that was the good point up yeah. until then. It's all going swimmingly, lovely, beautiful love story. But then what happens? I received a phone call. I was back in Edinburgh trying to work out how to bring her home and you know, a lot of paperwork involved, a lot of medical conditions needed to be checked. Unfortunately, she went missing in a city of Urumqi, three million people. Oh. So I was devastated, heartbroken. I thought that was the last I was going to see of Gobi. But I flew back to China and uh, set up a massive search team to, to scour the and city. And people were on the web and everybody was sharing information, looking for this little dog. Yes, the whole world got completely behind it. Poster, and it poster, was, uh, missing posters, all sorts of things. Maps involved, people, search teams. Um, then eventually you found her. Yeah. I was... mean, there were a few false um, <clears throat> finds, weren't there? Dogs that people thought were her, but you knew they weren't. What was the reaction when you two were reunited? It was incredible. It was the most heartwarming experience to walk into the room and see her. And she came running across the room and she jumped up in my arms. Oh. And again, it was another connection that Did we realised that it was oh, meant hello. to be together. Oh, that's nice. She knows how to... She's playing you like a violin, isn't she? <laughs> she she's picked she the right person. She's looking to see if anyone's dropped any biscuits did you, or anything anywhere, Did you cry? She? Were you in tears? Was yeah, I mean, it was, it was such an emotional time searching for her and we'd been through so much there's so many ups and downs throughout people had said that they'd had her she'd um, she'd been threatened with a life we'd been uh, ransom notices against yeah. her so to actually find her alive was just a miracle and the whole of china got behind it but the whole world was following <laughs> us i'm sorry to well. she's making herself quite at home here now isn't <laughs> she's she? staying here now. And, and would you care to hazard any sort of guess as to what mixture or breed gobi is <laughs> We don't exactly know, but I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Northwest China is, is a region with Chihuahuas and Shih Tzus, so we think she's a bit of a mixture of those. But uh, you're just unique, really, aren't you? Yeah. And any and idea how old? Between two and three years old, we think. So yeah. it's our one-year anniversary of meeting on the 20th of June this year. So we're going to celebrate her third birthday on that day. Ah, happy birthday! And now you've got a cat. You've got a cat friend, haven't you? How's the family cat taken to her? Actually, surprisingly well. And our cat Lara is an indoor ragdoll cat. She's nine years old. She's ruled the roost for the for all of her life. And uh, to bring a stray dongy to the home was always going to be a bit yeah. of a concern. But they get on like a house on fire. And, and tell me this, my friend. So she comes from a, a, a desert in China and she goes to uh, Edinburgh, which is not known for its heat no. and dryness. <laughs> um, how, how has she adapted? Well, she's, she's happy wherever I am, and yeah. I think that's, that's the main thing. When we're together, it's, um, we're, we're just happy together, and it's been such an emotional journey and such a roller coaster ride that it's, um, it's just incredibly rewarding to know she's safe and happy and healthy. And she's she's obviously it. clearly happy. She clearly adores you, and you've written it all in a book. 
a deal heard, on you've a heard finding, finding Gobi. You've heard of Finding Nemo. We have not got Finding, finding Gobi. Gobi. The true story of the little dog and an incredible journey is an incredible journey. And you're an incredible man for, for not giving up on her. And you are a very lucky girl, aren't you? Yes, you're beautiful, aren't you? And, and how, hey? just final words, how, how Dion, would you describe what she brings to your life? Well, finding Gobi was one of the most difficult things that I've ever had to do. You have to see this shot. Sorry, you're missing this. <laughs> she's she's just washing keep, yeah, in yeah. now. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, so finding Gobi was one of the most difficult things that I've ever done, but her finding me has also been one of the best things that's ever happened to me as well. And I go into detail in, in the book as to how she's helped me overcome things from my childhood and the experiences that we've had together have, have helped me through that. Oh, well, it's a wonderful partnership. We're so glad you found her well, again. She's bored now, Dion. Yeah, she's so bored now, now. Stop Gobi. Now. She's bored. That's had yeah. enough now. Done now.